So anyway, the first question is, uh, I have said about myself that I'm a closet comedian. Would I ever do? Would I ever consider doing stand-up? The answer to that is yes, and I have. Um, in the in the eighties, I was I introducing the Rocky Horror Show, so I decided that I would make it funny. It was um, uh, a live performance, and they wanted me to uh, introduce it, so I decided that I would make it funny. And I kind of did a little stand-up, and so after that, I said, I'm going to try this again. So I went down to the Westport Comedy Club, and I did I did four different uh, stand-up shows. Uh, not that I'm going to make a career of it. It was uh, it was not easy, but I was funny, and I got laughs, and it was all improv. So there you go. Next question: How did you get in, How did you get involved with the charity Painted Turtle? Um, Lou Adler, who is the producer of the Rocky Horror Show, out in L.A. when I did it on stage in 1973, he was the producer along with a guy named Michael White, who is English. And Lou uh, did a lot for me in my career. And when we, when he did some first demos with me out in L.A. with a with people that you probably don't have heard of, Tom Scott, a saxophone player big name musicians out in LA because Lou is responsible for Carol King, Mamas and the Papas, uh, a lot of bands. And for those of you who don't know Lou, if you ever see a new, uh, LA Lakers game and you see Jack Nicholson, Lou is sitting next to Jack. So anyway, when Bad Into Hell came out, they, there's no such thing as MTV or VH1, but we did videos and so I asked Lou if he would put the at Paradise is a trailer around the United States uh, for Rocky Horror. He did. So I have been working for Painted Turtle ever since he started working for Painted Turtle. And uh, I've raised a lot of money for Painted Turtle and I'm happy to do so. So there you go. Next question. Would you, would you ever consider doing a holiday album? The answer to that is yes. We probably will do one now, because basically what we've done is we've built a portable studio now. And so now we can basically record anywhere. And uh, that may be a project that comes up sometime next year. Okay. How are album covers created? I don't know how all, all album covers are created. Um, all the album covers, with the exception of one, have uh, been created. Uh, Bad in Hell uh, was really Steinman's uh, cre creation, uh, with with the motorcycle coming out of the grave and the bat sitting on things. So that was Jimmy's. Uh, bat Two, uh, when we came up with, uh, then uh, Bad Attitude was mine. Uh, Dead Ringer was mine. Dead Ringer came from a painting that. And hung on a, that I I'd seen on a wall in a museum. Um, they they all come. The only one that didn't was a uh, cover that was done for um, an album called Blind Before I Stop. And I had a cover, and the record company changed the cover on me, and I didn't know it. And I it'll never happen again. So I'm. Either the records I've done, either Steinman or myself, have been in, in control of making the, that cover art. We're going to cut now and pick up some more questions. Okay, now the question came up What music video did you enjoy uh, making the most? That's a tough one because. Um, we'll take my picture, I'm going to charge you. Okay, <laughs> I promise. What's your name? King Solomon. What is it? King Solomon? Okay, just remember, cut the baby in half. <laughs> so, <All right. laughs> um, so uh, what's my favorite video? You put put that one up too, by the way. You put, what's my favorite video? That's hard to say. The three, the first three we did with two, or the first four with two out of three. I, I love those. Um, there's, it's that's really tough. When I did Dead Ringer for Love with Cher. Uh, loved working with Cher. Uh, Cher walked in and saw me shoot my side and, and said, 
wow, you're serious about this, aren't you? And I went, yes, ma'am. And then um, working with Michael Bay on Anything for Love, Rock and Roll Dreams, and Objects in the Review Mirror, uh, Rock and Roll Dreams with Angelie Jolie, because that was one of the first things she ever did on film. That was amazing. Uh, working with a, a director named Michael Grant, who um, did I'd Lie for You and That's the Truth, which was a huge video. Working last year on Los Angeles Loser. I loved shooting videos, so I really don't have a favorite one. I have some ones that Paul Brown on, um, on uh, the uh, duet with Marion Raven. Amazing. I, 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 love, I love film and I love shooting, so there's no favorite. Uh, I, I, I probably have some that, that I don't like. But I loved uh, Not a Dry Eye in the House. Uh, the only time I didn't love them was they. Uh, so the last year I was on Epic, they said to me, "You got you got to stop being Cecil B. DeLove. We're handing it over to some other people." Those particular videos where I did had no where I had no creative input, didn't like them much. Um, is there any plans to re-release uh, remastered deluxe editions of Bat Ringer? Dead Ringer, Lost and Found, uh, and bonus material. Lots of artists are doing it at the moment. Uh, yeah, they are, but we're not. Okay, if you could spend a day in the studio with any artist to record, who would it be? Uh, oh, that one's easy. Elvis Presley. Um, would you ever do another duet with Cher? Absolutely. I love Cher. Cher's an amazing talent. Will you be back on Ghost Hunters again with Jay and Grant and the crew? I just sent Jay a text. Jay sent me a text the other day. said, you were fantastic on Celebrity Apprentice. And I sent it back. I said, look, I might be free in August. I want to come back on Ghost Hunters. He wrote back, absolutely. True or false, your favorite ice cream is vanilla. Uh, actually, that's false. My favorite ice cream is chocolate chip, but I can't eat ice cream because I'm lactose intolerant. You are young at heart. Thank you very much for that. What are your thoughts about doing voice work on animation films? Hey, all anybody's got to do is pick up the phone and call me. I'll be there. Um, is there any chance they'll bring back Rock on the Hard Place? No. Uh, I would do it, but they're not bringing it back. Have you ever thought about recording a country album? Or a country rock album? Well, um... Well, we, we, I just recorded this uh, Stand in the Storm for Backbone, in which uh, Mark McGrath and I sing the first verse, which the key was too low. I heard, uh, read, read some quotes the other day, Milo sounds like his voice is low. Well, it is, because the key was too low. And, uh, and John Rich did his country thing, and I sing a little bit of harmony with him. And, um, and then, excuse me, little John did his hip-hop thing. And so, yeah, and we've got sort of a, a song on the new album that uh, I'm actually having a uh, fiddle, a uh, country fiddle play on. So, second song on the album. So, I don't know if that's country or not, but it's got a country fiddle. Um, uh, yes, do you speak any foreign languages? Yes, femme la bouche, tout suis. Um... Or, they'll do mit smear, it's Kinogan. There you go. <laughs> and then the last question, are you coming to sh Chicago, Kansas City, Colorado, Germany, Ireland, Spain, etc.? Are you going to any of those places? Um, uh, Chicago, Kansas City, Colorado. We're going to Colorado. We'll be in Grand Junction in, in August. Uh, we just were in Ireland last December. Um... Uh, we were in Portugal a bit. Uh, all I can tell you is that I would I would venture to say that it sometime in within the next um, what month is it now? It's May or June. May. End of May. Between in the next year and a half, I would venture to say that uh, we will be in uh, probably most of these places by that time. And the best way to ever find out, even though we're slow, I will admit is to go to meatloaf.net and eventually tour dates will be put up there. So keep your questions coming in and uh, we'll keep answering them. See you later, folks. Have a good day. Now we're waiting for my wife who's shopping.
Okay, we're still outside waiting for my wife to come down from shopping, so I thought I'd answer some more questions. Uh, the first question, how did the songs for Hank Cool Teddy Bear come about? Well, uh, did writers come, it says, did writers come to you with them? No. Um, writers never come to me with them, and if they do, when they do come, the songs are never what they come with, <laughs> because um, I, I constantly change them. Uh, what happened mostly with Henkel Teddy Bear is a series of writers came to, to Rob Cavallo's house and spent over five weeks with us as we, uh, I mean, they came with certain songs and certain ideas, and we just kind of made them, mold them into Hankel Teddy Bear. So no, none of these were like songs. Ex the one song that's the exception, and even I changed that, is the uh, Elvis and Vegas Bon Jovi song. And I changed the lyrics to that. So without John telling me I could, but he didn't mind, it's okay. So, but no, nobody ever just, I don't ever take a song that's just like somebody hands me and goes, okay, here's a song, doesn't happen. Okay, uh, why no mention of Stan in the Storm in the finale? Exactly. I have the same question that you do. Why no mention of the Stan in the Storm? They're apologizing, saying, oh, it was live TV and it just went a different direction. But, um, like I said before, if you went go to iTunes this morning, it's on the, we had it all set up, front page of iTunes this morning, backbone Stan in the Storm. And uh, I was a little bit upset. Why no mention? Because it was scripted that we were going to talk about it. It was in the script of the show that we were going to talk about it. And it didn't happen. And so now they're trying to say, well, we'll get it mentioned other ways. But there was 15 million people watching. And we would have probably been had a, uh, the charities would have had a, a top 10 download this morning had we been able to mention it. So anyway, yes, I'm upset. Um, What does your wife think about you being on Celebrity Apprentice? She laughed at me when I cried, and she was angry at me when I got yelled at Gary Busey. That's what she thought. She goes, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why are you crying all the time? And I told you not to scream at Gary, because the night before uh, I screamed at Gary, um, I'm going to confess now, since it's over, um, the night before, Star Jones and Gary had been in an argument. Little John had been in an argument with Gary and actually uh, told him he was going to knock him out. Richard Hatch had been in an argument with Gary the night before. Mark McGrath had been in an argument with Gary before. I went into John Rich, said we better send Gary home, um, came out. That's when we saw Richard Hatch. I went running back in for John. We sent, uh, John came out and Gary then, because up until that point they'd called me the Gary Whisperer which kind of John Rich and I were kind of like keeping Gary in control and everything was fine. But that particular night, it was very late. It was on a, it was on a Thursday night and it was about, by that time, it was about 1.30 in the morning. We were still doing the TV show. And uh, it, it, Gary doesn't function well when he's really tired at all and and he had been in every and star jones he'd been fight with star jones been fighting little john been a fight with mark was in a fight with richard hatch then he got then he got mad at me because he was blaming me for the, being the one to say tell him to go home for john to send him home and the next morning he didn't want to go down to the paint store and and it just escalated until i had uh, i was like that volcano that just had enough enough heat and that's what happened but still Gary and Nene got in a shoving match last night great okay too bad we don't have that on film okay did, did I appear in King Lear many years ago on Broadway no I appeared in off Broadway in Central Park in two uh, uh, Shakespeare's and it wasn't in 91 or 92 uh, and you, you never talk about King Lear when you're backstage, by the way, just so you know it's bad luck. Uh, I did As You Like It and Othello, and those were in the early 70s for the New York Shakespeare Festival. Um, 
Would I ever consider a duet with Bon Jovi? Absolutely. In fact, John uh, has um, uh, come on stage with me before, and we have we sang uh, uh, Johnny Be Good together. So it's on tape somewhere in my little file, and I have John Bon Jovi's uh, original original demos uh, from 1979 on on cassette tape in my uh, files. So there you go. Is the skeleton from Hang Cool Teddy Bear the biker from Bad Out of Hell? The answer to that question is absolutely correct. Yes, the skeleton from Hang Cool Teddy Bear is the biker from Bad Out of Hell. Very good. Australian tour dates and tickets. Well, we're working. I just got off the phone going, when are they going to put this up? Um, within, and, and I, I just... Soon, just within the next week and a half, we'll know exactly. Um, I I would tell you I know what the first date is, but I'm not going to tell you because somebody's liable to shoot me or something, you know. But it could be Melbourne. So anyway, um, that's that's that. That's uh, my guess. It's first date, and uh, and we're shooting a DVD down there as well, and uh, most likely that'll be in Sydney. So just to let you know, but as soon as we know, you'll be the first to know. See you later.